Hello together! In this video I will show you the differences between a large eddy simulation and a rent simulation. If you liked this video then please give us a like and support the channel so that we can deliver more of the content like this. This really supports us by ranking the video higher in the YouTube algorithm. If you have a look to the different results coming from the same model with the same time step and the same net, you clearly can see that there's a main difference in the simulation results. While the run simulation seems to deliver very steady results with only minor changes in the velocities, the large eddy simulation shows a much finer resolution of the vortices or eddies as the name implies. Large eddies are resolved in the simulation. In the following I'd like to discuss what is needed when. Hi, I'm Hendrik and this is a video by Ingenieurdo. In fluid dynamics there are two different types of flows, laminar and turbulent flows. The most common type in university teaching is the laminar flow, but it's very uncommon in real life tasks. To decide if you have turbulent or laminar flow you can calculate the Reynolds number. If the Reynolds number is less than 2300 then it's laminar flow. If it's more than 2900 then it's turbulent flow. Often the Reynolds number is in the 6 or 7 figures category if you are simulating larger structures or higher velocities. So it is not necessary to calculate this Reynolds number every time before the simulation. In simulation programs like OpenFoam there are three major methods which can be used to solve a turbulent flow. The first is the RENS or RES simulation. This stands for Reynolds Average Navier-Stokes or Reynolds Average Stress. As the name implies, the solution gives a more or less average result. Within RANS, different turbulence models can be chosen, like laminar, k omega SSD, and a few more. Yes, laminar is considered here as a turbulence model. The second method is the large eddy simulation, or LES. It's used to simulate vortex movements and peak velocities in a fluid flow. In a LES simulation, large eddies are resolved to visualize these eddies as well. The third method is the DNS. DNS stands for Direct Numerical Simulation. The matrices are no longer solved by a numerical solver, but directly by inverting the matrix every time step. That means no convergence must be considered and no errors are implied in the results. Efficiency and accuracy are entry proportional. The rest is fastest to solve, but the least accurate simulation. LES is in the middle and DNS is very time consuming to solve and needs a lot of computational power, but delivers the most accurate results. The RAND simulation will be used in engineering problems, where an engineer needs to know, for example, the mass flow of a multi-inlet outlet problem. Because LES is way more time consuming, it's used if large vortexes or eddy structures are important for the result. The simulation is used by engineers and scientists, if for example peak velocities in a wind simulation are from interest. This is very similar to the simulation of the car in the beginning. A question here could be, how high are the velocities where the driver would sit? DNS is used by scientists mainly. If new solvers are developed or if it's a very special and complex case, which cannot be too big. The eddies and vortices are formed, in this case behind the windshield of the car. It's clearly visible that the driver would sit in a spot where the velocities are much higher than the RAND simulation in the beginning would have implied. The visualites, the moving vortices, are used multiple layers of slices of the simulation results. In these slices all velocities with higher velocities than the traveling speed of the car of 25 meters per second are set to invisible. The layers themselves are set to an opacity of 30%. You can see here the results of three vertical slices and one horizontal slice at the height of the wheel hubs. But of course the air movement can be visualized in different ways like shown here. Thanks for watching.